I'm Dr. Warren, and today I'm going to run through a Lyme study. I try to do this where I go through a study and try to pick out the important points for you, break it down to something that's digestible. So we're going to dive into some science today. And specifically, this is in part of our series of why does your doctor miss you? And we're going to be talking about inflammation today. Inflammation is a huge source of symptoms. This is your body trying to fight the bug. And it's really something that's not done well overall in the medical community. So what question we want to be answering is, what is the source of your chronic nerve symptoms in Lyme disease? Where are we getting chronic brain fog? Where are we getting balance problems? Where are we getting anxiety and sleep problems? Where are we getting chronic pain from? You know, where is this fatigue where our brain just feels like we're done for the day? Where is this stuff coming from? And there's a big focus in Lyme disease on killing the bugs, and rightly so. You want to be doing something to help kill Lyme and kill Bartonella and kill Babesia. And this, there's this big focus on what are you doing to help eliminate these bugs. However, there's a lack of focus on some of the inflammation. This is the study we're going to pull out. This is a January 2022 study, so very recent. And it says neuropathogenicity of non-viable Borrelia burgdorferi. So a couple key phrases neuropathogenicity. Where is the pathology in the nerves? Where is the nerve problem? Genesis means coming from, right? So if we look at the book of Genesis, Genesis means beginning, it means origin. So where is the nerve symptoms coming from? Here is the intro. Even after appropriate treatment, some people still have symptoms. This is often called chronic Lyme or post-treatment Lyme disease. Now, brain PET scans have seen neuroinflammation on people with chronic Lyme. We know there's neuroinflammation, but I rarely get anyone in the office with a brain PET scan. If people have nerve symptoms, what I see is generally MRIs. MRIs show structure. They don't really show function. And for the most part, MRIs are clear. Now, this is a problem. With bad testing, what happens is your doctors become confused. Everything looks normal, and they tell you everything's normal it must be anxiety. Everything's normal, it must be in your head. Everything's normal, this can't be real. And if they can't visualize the problem with some kind of test, then you don't get the credibility, you don't get believed, and it ends up being an issue. So bad testing leads to you as a patient really being treated poorly in our estimate. The other question they're asking is, is it possible that you can kill Borrelia, meaning Lyme, and that the dead fragments are still there driving neuroinflammation. And this is important. And it's important because the living Borrelia burgdorferi, the solution would be, well, we should kill that. But if you've already killed the Borrelia burgdorferi, you can't kill it more. So this is a big fork in the road. Why is the big deal? Well, there's a huge focus on antibiotics and there's a huge focus on natural treatments that are all aimed at killing the bug. SOT, can you kill the bug? Herbs, can you kill the bug? Drugs, can you kill the bug? There's this huge theoretical focus on killing the bug. We're going to be looking at inflammation. We're also going to be looking at it's possible that you have inflammation from the dead bug, which means if you have a problem with the dead bug, the solution can't be more killing. It's, it's already dead. So if Borrelia is dead, then you would need to clean up the dead Borrelia and you'd need to calm down the inflammation. So this is a really big change in what you might need to do to get better or a more comprehensive approach. You might need to do both things. So let's dive into the study. How did they do it? They're injecting dead and living Borrelia into different nerve tissue, measuring 26 different kinds of inflammation. Let's look at what they found. We found that the dead Lyme caused more inflammation than the living Lyme. This is a big deal. It means you may have more problems even after you've killed it than you did before you killed it. And that's why you don't want a program that's only aiming at killing it. You want a program that does have parts to kill it, also has parts to help clean it out, also has parts to help your immune system calm down as that's happening. A more complete program than just killing it absolutely has to be part of your protocol. Now, here's more results, and this is part of the discussion. I'm going to read part of the discussion for you. We show in this study that non-viable Borrelia burgdorferi, that means dead Borrelia burgdorferi, can cause neuroinflammation. Okay, that's a big deal. That's a big deal because if it's already dead, you can't kill it more. Need to be doing other parts of the protocol than trying to beat that dead horse if it's already dead. The bacterial fragments often elicit higher levels of inflammation in media than the living bacteria. 
when you kill the bacteria, it breaks apart and you're left with all these little pieces. And all the little pieces can be more inflammatory to your immune system than the whole thing. There's a huge population of Lyme people out there who just think, if I have symptoms, I have to kill it. If I have symptoms, I have to kill it. If I have symptoms, I have to kill and kill and kill. We catch people in the office who have been on antibiotics for years and years and years, sometimes decades. So it may not be a problem killing. It may be a problem with cleaning out the dead bugs once you're killing them. This is one of the pictures we use of when you're cleaning, cleaning a closet, you can make a mess and it can be overwhelming. And if you're not balancing the killing and the cleaning properly, that's what we call a Herx effect. 90% of the time, it means you really need to do something different as far as what you're doing to kill and how much support you're doing to clean up the bacteria as you're killing it. All right, concluding remarks from the study. Once again, I'm gonna read right from the study here. In conclusion, we show in this study that non-viable remnants of Borrelia burgdorferi are pathogenic to both the peripheral nerves and the central nerves. This means we can get nerve symptoms, tingling, pain, burning, problems with our peripheral nerves. You can also get central nerves, anxiety, balance problems, sleep problems, coming from the inflammation that's coming from dead, not alive, dead Borrelia burgdorferi. Here's another one. Induction of several proalgesic mediators in both central and peripheral nerves. Implications for chronic pain. Okay, algesic means pain. So this means it causes pain. Proalgesic mediators means this can cause chronic pain problems. That's a big deal if you're suffering from chronic pain as part of chronic Lyme. Now here's another statement I'm just gonna read. Persistence of symptoms in some patients post-treatment indicates that in a subset of these patients, in some people, Borrelia burgdorferi fragments in the nervous system could be the cause. Such antibiotic refractive conditions need novel anti-inflammatory approaches for therapeutics. What are they saying? They're saying antibiotics would never, ever solve this problem because it's already dead. And the only way to solve this problem in some patients is by helping with the anti-inflammatory process and the immune system cleaning up the already dead bacterial debris. Warning, this is a big nerve mode, okay? Just, this is gonna look absolutely gobbledygook. The point is not that you know what all this means. This is the analytes. Now they have 26, I think I have upwards of 20 on here. These are some of the inflammatory chemicals that they are testing and analyzing. Oh my goodness, I wish this is what doctors did. But no, when you go to your doctor, they measure one mark of inflammation, usually C-reactive protein. It's a good test but it was invented in 1930. It's, it's going to be close to 100 years old. It is not a thorough look at the immune system. It's just one look at the immune system. We must be running more complete inflammatory panels. Need as part of our work with chronic Lyme people to be measuring inflammation in these kind of in-depth panels. Need to be running inflammation patterns to see where is your immune system stuck. And when your doctors just run one marker and then say they can't find the inflammation, it just means the testing needs to be better. So can you get 20 plus inflammation markers tested? The answer is, uh, yeah, we can run at least six in our office and oftentimes we're running uh, 10 to 15, 16 markers. This has been a huge upgrade for our clinic in understanding where your immune system is and what does it mean for helping you fight these chronic problems key details not to miss. There's several types of inflammation to measure, not just C-reactive protein. And better inflammation testing can give us more clarity on what's happening with your immune system in response to this condition. Your protocol absolutely must have immune balancing support in it. Your protocol must have detox or what I call cleanup built in it. If there's only a killing strategy to your protocol, it is a partial protocol. It is not complete you're assuming your body can do these other parts without any help. That is not a safe assumption if you're struggling with a chronic illness. So I like to say that all the pieces of support need to come together in a balanced way for you to heal. It's an essential component that I often see missed when patients come to me 
working with other practitioners. They've been focused, focused, focused on killing, and we haven't been focused on the other parts in a balanced way. I'm Dr. Warren. Hope you found this useful.